morning and thank you, thank you for, for inviting me here. I'm very honored and very pleased also. I have a lot of things to say, but as you are mostly archaeologists, I can't rush a bit through the many slides that I've prepared. It's more like a, uh, for, for recall some basic uh, points. I have arranged my conference with 12 major points, like the tribes of Israel and the, the apostles, so <laughs> I hope they will go down to the last. Uh, because I have many things to say and, and I'm very, very pleased that uh, these discussions will open. Uh, to, um, discussion with uh, uh, Israeli uh, partners uh, with whom we are already working and uh, I hope that we will have very fruitful uh, exchanges. Just basic uh, facts uh, about uh, building archaeology and the framework uh, because there are different types of uh, founding, uh, financing such operations depending on if they are uh, done in uh, a frame of, of uh, rescue archaeology or uh, planned programs. Uh, and also the fourth, I won't um, describe this in detail because I have no time to do it, but just to, 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 to remind you that the focus of such uh, studies will be determined by uh, the framework if it is a rescue uh, operation or a planned um, operation with an architect for restoration um, projects uh, in prelim preliminary studies or also academic research like doctorate theses which would make a great and very important contribution uh, to the progress of basic research. <coughs> and uh, we will see some of these uh, works. The first point that I want to start with is survey uh, documenting the architecture uh, and its spatial uh, reality and also the canvas for uh, stratigraphical observation uh, regarding the wall, which is our main document that we are working on. Uh, the traditional method is hand by uh, hand drawing uh, to scale, which is still the best way to approach uh, in detail the material reality and to uh, describe uh, the analytic uh, uh, approach uh, and by doing it by hand. That's what's what I prefer, but it is often today combined with other methods. We've got here two basic, the, the, the hand line, I give my uh, one of my own uh, drawings, and uh, of course uh, now uh, the basic uh, survey method being photogrammetry with a famous building like saint hermantaire Draguignan. And here, uh, just to show you that uh, both don't necessarily fulfill the same purpose. This is uh, uh, two, uh, the, uh, two documents done by Heike Hansen, who is uh, present with us. Uh, a photogrammatic uh, uh, um, uh, survey of, of a wall, 12th century, but uh, it is so illegible that she also did a hand drawing, uh, which is absolutely necessary for the very complex stratigraphy uh, of this building. On the other hand, we have, of course, uh, 3D um, uh, tools and uh, also the possibility of using them for uh, photogrammetry, as uh, this example by Anne Flamin, who uh, uses this uh, um, author photography as a base for a stone by stone uh, stratigraphic uh, analysis which you can see uh, on the right side which is derived from it. Uh, yet returning to the, um, it's not uh, a, um, I said both don't necessarily exclude each other as you can see with this uh, uh, drawing which uh, is from our uh, project on Saint Gilles Abbey also a drawing done by hand by Heike Hansen, who uh, also did a uh, um, photogrammetric uh, gra grammetry of the same wall, but still the same, the purpose is not the same, documenting the visual aspect and also the analytical aspect. It is like, like a very detailed map of the types of, of the observation that we need, like mason marks, tool marks, and all the traces of uh, uh, alterations and transformations uh, during time, during period. I will return to that aspect later on. Of course, third point is stratigraphy, uh, the analysis and our different methods. Uh, this is one, and I give you this very good example of a doctorate thesis, Stéphane Bully, uh, uh, experiments with this method on a very uh, detailed scale for a 
difficult building, Romanesque in its base, and with many alterations, as you can see. And it is an excellent example of uh, uh, what can be done with uh, this method uh, using this Archaeodata um, uh, system, which uh, uses two different uh, types of classification of stratigraphic uh, analysis and also the architectural analysis with two uh, different codes. Uh, I'm using it myself, and uh, also uh, the important uh, fact is to relate the um, uh, vertical stratigraphy to uh, the sedimental stratigraphy uh, by Dix. It's the one in the same uh, system. He also has introduced a color code. This is a very German thing, I would say, uh, maybe inspired by them, because, uh, just to have a color for a century. <laughs> which uh, is a bit problematic if you have four different periods in one uh, century, you've got four different colors, and, and when it's printed, it's not necessarily very obvious, but it is a very good means of communicating uh, the result of a complex analysis, as you can see here, with the, an elevation that started in the 11th century. And uh, another example, it's not from France, but the, the church type is very French, so uh, I refer also to our neighbors in Europe. We still have some kind of Europe now, and uh, this is uh, that Spanish uh, and Italian contribute very, very largely to the progress of uh, building archaeology. So this is just an example of a color code uh, used also in combination with a Harris matrix, which all archaeologists know, which is also adapted to uh, building archaeology, as you can see uh, on uh, the uh, right side. I'm not, I don't totally agree, actually, with the analysis itself, but uh, uh, as such, uh, it is a good example. Then, stratigraphy um, must of course, all, always be uh, related to a, uh, a catalog and also a, um, a database. An example of what, what you have done it in the cloister buildings, the, the monastic Romanesque cloister buildings of St. Giles Abbey, and then the use of a color code uh, for different periods. Uh, this is uh, just one uh, highlighting, one color highlighting one, the first building stage of the southern building again it is a hand drawing deliberately completing uh, or doubling in a certain way the uh, scan uh, the the um, author photography photography sorry difficult word uh, of the same elevation uh, also done by Heik Hansen who is our specialist in this field and this uh, canvas allows for a very precise analysis of which is still left of the original building uh, I I have another proposal of uh, a color code which is I'm using myself in different way for, for instance, building stages, the phases of uh, uh, the rhythm of um, stone uh, layers being uh, laid by the masons in one and the same building process. So the colors are not really uh, uh, a chronological, it's only relative chronology. All this was built in the 1180s, 90s, so it's a different. Uh, approach and also uh, an example of how mm, a hand drawing can be used as a complementary uh, device for uh, information just to providing these stratigraphic informations alongside with the scale and the exact um, laser uh, drawing of the same elevation. Fourth point is uh, the analysis of building materials. And there, here uh, I give a famous example. I hope that Anne uh, Bo is here because she made a great contribution with her thesis uh, when she studied the remains of uh, uh, Cluny Abbey and uh, with uh, hi highlighting many uh, essential points, uh, one of which was the simultaneous use by the builders, the late 11th and early. 12th century of different uh, types of stones depending on the areas of the building. And this is something that many people often mistake for being uh, related to different building periods, which is not the case. It's just a choice of different materials depending on the importance, the visual impact of uh, an elevation. And this is an excellent example. I will return to Cluny later on when I'm talking about scaffoldings. Uh, materials, of course, it's also the point where geological analysis uh, plays a um, very important role. Have various studies been done, mostly 
So it's very important, as you see, for sculptured portals like this, the west door uh, of Chartres Cathedral, which is somewhere in between uh, late Romanesque and early Gothic. And uh, the uh, study done by the uh, Centre d'études Médiévales of uh, Vézelay uh, Port, which is just la now undergoing a fantastic restoration. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, this kind of uh, uh, colored um, uh, stratigraphy and uh, cartography shows the use of certain materials for uh, the uh, sculptured parts. In our study of St. Giles, this uh, is uh, 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 um, total station stone by stone um, survey and hand drawing still done by Heike Hansen. Um, we had uh, the, 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 the geological analysis was very important just to prove that uh, the beginning of the church was done with reused stone from a previous building that also was found, or the materials of which were also found, in the foundations of the same wall. And the different uh, geological characteristics highlight this uh, in a very obvious way. Uh, same type of study has been done on a large scale in the frame of a, a doctorate thesis, which is very fresh, uh, uh, Le Wang, on uh, Kunk, uh, one of the greater churches on the uh, pilgrimage roads to St. Santiago de Compostela. And also here a color code shows the joint use of various types of stones uh, for the building. And this is correlated also to different other cartographies, uh, stone uh, mason marks, and uh, as you will see also, the marks of um, the uh, tools. Mason marks are one of the major clues for an analysis when they are present, not only in Romanesque, of course. Uh, this is, uh, these are two examples of uh, the, the earliest Romanesque mason marks yet found, early 11th century. They look very Gothic, by the way. It's very strange. And uh, cartography, and, and uh, I used this also for my own thesis a long, long time ago uh, as one of the major points that gave me clues for the rhythm and the, the way the, strip, the, the chronology of the building process in the 12th century. Again, Li Wang and his study of mason marks uh, with uh, specialized uh, uh, work, uh, which is uh, highlighted by special, specific marks on arches, his catalogue and cartography, and uh, here a correlation of the geological and uh, the um, uh, stone uh, surface analysis of the same elevations. As you can see, there are some uh, <coughs> uh, things that go together where a stone type of stone is worked in a certain way with certain tools. And uh, the masonry uh, is also uh, uh, used as one of the major uh, um, analytical facts, uh, also with statistics uh, uh, of mason marks and size of stones. St uh, mason marks again, cartography as one of the main uh, major um, clues for a stratigraphy and a general analysis of the building process and the rhythm and the progress. The different colors here at Saint-Gilles show the progress by horizontal layers and this is the translation to uh, a uh, chronological um, series, seriation of the uh, building process. The uh, analysis of the stone surface itself can be essential. A uh, long time ago, I studied these here. These are uh, decorative uh, stone uh, tool marks in a 12th century church in the Rhone Valley. And this is this type of, of, uh, of decoration, which is very typical of a certain period and a certain region. And in this case was also a major clue for the relative chronology, chronology of the same building. As you can see, there are two different styles that are uh, coming together here. In this field also, uh, the um, stone carving itself and the experimental archaeology has, uh, plays a great role. You can see here different uh, examples and I um, greet, uh, I, so it's, it's a homage to uh, Jean-Claude uh, Bessac, 
you see most of you of those who work with stone medieval stone carving know him and also now the experimental uh, workshop of Guidelon uh, Castle which you have possibly heard about uh, building a uh, an early 13th century castle exclusively with period methods uh, and even in period costumes more or less when I mean, he's wearing a t-shirt but uh, no, nobody's perfect. <laughs> so this uh, type of analysis has yielded uh, essential clues, for instance here in Vesely, which is Gothic, early Gothic, but uh, uh, built as a second stage of the rebuilding of a Romanesque church, and with uh, a transitional um, a choice of techniques. Uh, this is uh, Arnaud Timbert, who highlighted here the introduction of a tool which is typically Gothic, uh, the uh, dented, uh, the, the, the toothed uh, stone hammer, and you can see with this color code uh, the uh, different zones of this uh, choir where they um, were introduced. Uh, so, this is an essential point still for um, the analysis of masonry types uh, and uh, their typo chronology uh, here early uh, Ashlar in the early 11th century with the tool marks which are typical and uh, Daniel Prigent another name a pioneer of all these uh, uh, types of, of studies uh, with his statistical approaches for um, of um, Ashlar in Anjou from the Carolingian <coughs> to the early Romanesque and uh, uh, this um, example of um, study to, of later Romanesque uh, buildings uh, and tendencies towards uh, standardization, Saint Gilles, f Western facade, and uh, the choir, again, stone by stone, hand drawings by Heike Hansen, a you know, huge, huge uh, amount of, uh, of these um, excellent. Uh, uh, surveys and uh, they show here that they, that some um, material um, uh, stones in, in normed uh, heights of courses was used alternatively in the upper parts of both which are uh, completely were built at the same time those though uh, situated at uh, two opposite um, uh, elements of the uh, huge abbey church another point important and a uh, uh, research um, field in itself, uh, uh, plaster, painting, stucco, and the name of uh, Bendik Palazzo should, uh, will be named later, who is the great specialist of that. And uh, these uh, surveys, of, uh, of course, also are used to highlight these and, and uh, to cartography these remains, which may be very, very um, uh, difficult to uh, detect on a photograph. Uh, these um, the study the archaeological study of uh, uh, mortar plaster uh, painting is a field a research field in itself um, uh, Christian Sapin published a wonderful book on that uh, uh, in Auxerre this is these are six stages of uh, the realization the making of a, a, an 11th century painting and uh, a mortar is also one of the elements that give clues to the relative chronology uh, and absolute chronology, if you have uh, carbon dating is possible, uh, of the building. Uh, Daniel Prigent has uh, highlighted this and pointed out this uh, uh, already 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, at Fontevraud, as you can see here in the uh, apps, uh, the, the, not, uh, it's a uh, transit itself, transit as an example, and of course here uh, the uh, analysis, the microscopic analysis uh, necessary of uh, plaster of, of uh, mortar to uh, establish the um, typology typology of mortars used in a building. This is uh, Benedict Palazzo's work. Uh, Nate point. Uh, often neglected, and I really uh, want to, to highlight that, uh, graffiti. Because often they are mistaken for uh, tourist uh, uh, damage, but uh, we have a lot of uh, graffiti and you too, and uh, often it's not, it's highly unattractive, as you can see, when we had an excellent study, Saint-Gilles uh, by Anne-Sophie Brun, and if you ex extract uh, from this uh, uh, the individual uh, um, graffiti, all these are medieval uh, 13th, 14th century 
uh, and, and different categories. So it's an extremely uh, demanding, challenging uh, type of study and really worthy because it, this is also part of the heritage, the heritage of the surface of a wall. And this has allowed, in, in the case of St. Giles, um, also the, uh, to, de to discover something which has never, had never been observed, uh, a graffiti which is in reality an inscription, a Cyrillic inscription from the Romanesque times. And when we found it, it was found to be the most, the westernmost uh, uh, pilgrimage inscription uh, of the time that had ever been detected and had never been observed because it was take, mistaken for a tourist uh, <laughs> graffiti. Graffito. As you can see, Lord help your, son, your servant Siemko, uh, son of Ninoslav uh, and the uh, study. The ninth point now is all, uh, the uh, traces left by the um, building process itself and what it tells about the building process. Uh, in particular, um, the um, uh, potlot holds <coughs> and uh, if there is wood, as we see, uh, it can be dated, but it's also the, um, the pattern of the uh, scaffolding that can be reconstructed, which shows which uh, parts of the building under construction were accessible at the same time. And this is one of the arguments which uh, uh, um, uh, Bo could develop to uh, prove actually that these different types of masonry at Cluny were actually built simultaneously. As you can see here with these uh, scaffoldings and uh, the position of the public holes inside, outside, uh, in the elevation. Another point are these um, um, centers of the vaults, which leave traces on the vaults uh, themselves. And uh, essential for dating of these uh, uh, wooden structures, if they are permanent, either if they, uh, there are remains of potlots in the, the holes or permanent uh, wooden structures in the masonry, like these beams, tie beams in uh, St. Michael's Chapel of uh, the Tournu Abbey, which uh, where it could be dated dendrochronologically uh, from the building period. Uh, so they are contemporary of the building process uh, around uh, the second quarter of the 12th century. And the most famous example that I would like to uh, mention, and Elizabeth Laurent knows very well, because she, she was one of the uh, leaders of the, the, this program with Christian Dormois, uh, uh, um, um, Loche, the um, Cape of Loche, which was entirely dated by uh, wood from the uh, um, scaffolding uh, and could be dated to the historically uh, uh, known um, period of the first third of the 11th century. Um, wooden structures in Romanesque architecture are a field uh, of research in themselves. The most uh, important promoter is Frédéric Epoux, uh, who discovered by uh, studying uh, some uh, of these um, uh, roof constructions uh, that there were remains of earlier stages. Frederick uh, Ipo is also very important now for the research that will be done, I hope so, uh, on the rest, the remains of the uh, Notre Dame um, roof uh, that burned a month ago. And he also wrote an excellent article on what he know, what is already known about this uh, roof, uh, which can be read. I think it's been published online. And so I really want to uh, mention his essential work on roof uh, timber structures and their typology. Uh, archaeometry, also other materials, uh, carbon dating, of course, uh, and uh, the uh, dating of ceramic materials, which, for instance, at Angers Saint Martin has allowed to review completely uh, the dating of this church and to establish a Carolingian date for the first uh, building stage here. It's the crossing of the transept uh, built in the later, possibly in the later 9th century. Uh, an 11th point, uh, which is uh, dear to me, is trying to find from the analysis, through the analysis of a an excellent uh, plan, ground plan, um, to the, uh, eventually uh, the, the system of measurements and proportions that might have been used and by builders in Romanesque times. We can, I can uh, eventually mention this or uh, give more precise information about that when we visit 
uh, Abu Ghosh, because this is the ground plan of uh, Abu Ghosh, in a new service, survey by Heike Hansen. And uh, uh, this allowed for an ana part analysis of, of the proportions, uh, because there is, for instance, a system of uh, proportions in our inner outer uh, from three to four. Uh, the inner length of the western wall is three uh, times uh, an unit which is to be found four times on the outside and there are other um, proportions that can be detected and this is very important because it can this is one of the arguments that proves that this church was conceived as a whole and not had, did not reuse an earlier structure as a foundation as had been uh, um, um, imagined previously, but I think it's you know, can, if you want, uh, give some more information on Abu Ghosh, which we studied with our laboratory, uh, uh, to, uh, and we also gave already a lecture on, on these on this work in progress here in this uh, very room uh, two years ago. The um, methodology, another um, or metrology, and a very uh, interesting. Um, example of what this can we do is, is again Saint Gilles uh, because we found there uh, on the um, system the en uh, engraved lines on the upper uh, surface of the foundations which gave uh, to the masons of the 12th century the outlines of the elevations that had to be constructed. I've underlined them with red and moreover this very important uh, fact, uh, signs uh, that had been incised, that were incised in one of the layers of the apse, uh, and which actually uh, give the main axis of the radiati radiating chapels. This would never have been discovered without a stone-by-stone, -stone, very attentive uh, analysis of the whole structure, as uh, I did, for instance, here, uh, with this uh, stratigraphic analysis and, and uh, actually um, um, registering every uh, single uh, lesion of the surface and this uh, uh, gave these informations which I think are pretty unique and it's interesting for Israel because there is a close relationship between the design of this choir and the Holy uh, Sepulchre uh, Church. Um, <laughs> Twelve, final point uh, after studying a building now, 3D is the essential means of communication. There are different ways of uh, um, producing a 3D document, uh, uh, isometric um, um, uh, representations like this, like these, very famous of uh, uh, Flavigny, and more recent with uh, Anne Flamin and Anne Beau um, of um, Saint André uh, Le Haut in Vienna. Uh, experience shows that these really excellent uh, 3D representations are very difficult uh, to understand uh, if you are not trained to do so. I just a catastrophe uh, when I, I, g I gave to my students uh, a document like that for a uh, written uh, exam and it was horrible. So I think uh, that is a basic problem of communication. It is easier uh, for people just to view uh, 3D reconstructions. Uh, these are those that we Götz Echternach that did for us uh, uh, based on the laser um, uh, survey uh, to reconstruct, for instance, lighting. Uh, and lighting effects that are no longer visible, for instance, in the crypt and in the upper church, because the upper church was destroyed and uh, rebuilt in a different fashion. So this is um, very important. And at the si same time, the um, idea here is not to create a hyper-realistic uh, virtual space like uh, the, these famous and beautiful reconstructions of Cluny Abbey, but to stay with a uh, just uh, um, a view of uh, the uh, the architectural volumes, not trying to uh, to transport the uh, observer into a virtual uh, space, uh, a realistic space. Uh, scanning can be used for uh, reconstruction too. This is a very very recent, uh, not yet, it's, it's a thesis that, um, done by uh, Emanuele Galotta. It's an Italian church, so uh, pardon me uh, if I go to. Uh, uh, I, I introduce an Italian example, but it's, it's an excellent 
a specimen to see, to show what can be done with a, a laser scanning, uh, with a scanned uh, building and uh, just to highlight these different phases. And then uh, the use of both realistic and uh, unrealistic uh, in what we did for the reconstruction of uh, St. Giles Choir, which was destroyed in the religious wars and, and later on uh, the revolution again. Uh, just rebuilding the volumes in a neutral fashion without any uh, uh, allusion to the stone, to the masonry, and also leaving off everything that we don't know uh, as a, uh, just a blank uh, a pattern without, for instance, trying to, to reconstruct the, uh, the, the capitals which are lost mostly, and just the volumes which translate the uh, reconstruction of the upper structure closely related, as I said, to the choir of the uh, Holy Sepulchre Church. And uh, this, uh, the interesting thing is that we can distinguish here by these two colors and also the two approaches of uh, um, photogrammetry for the existing structures and building, cat building uh, of the uh, reconstruction and to distinguish both of them visually just to give an idea of the proportions, enormous proportions of this choir. Um, and just to finish, uh, uh, after all, teaching, uh, very important, and I uh, want to mention my uh, colleagues of uh, uh, Toulouse University, uh, Bastien Lefebvre, who had the excellent idea of publishing a web tutorial, uh, Archaeologie Bati, ou comment lire un mur, Archeo building archaeology, or how to read a wall, which ca you can just click on, and uh, it is really well done for beginners and as an introduction to the principles and uh, the techniques of building archaeology. So that's also the a very important part just to spread the word and to um, introduce as many archaeologists as possible to these methods and the perspectives they open. So, thank you. I don't didn't hear how much time I used. I think it was just just 30 minutes. Uh, it was a bit fast, but I hope that you grasped some of the ideas that I wanted to convey. Thank you.